of the law. And God spake all these words, saying, I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. Thou shalt not make unto thee any graven image, or any likeness of anything that is in heaven above, or that is in the earth beneath, or that is in the water under the earth. Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them. For I, the Lord thy God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me, and showing mercy unto thousands of them that love me and keep my commandments. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain, for the Lord will not hold him guiltless that taketh his name in vain. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou, shall thou labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God, in it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day, wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. Honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee. Thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's wife, nor his manservant, nor his maidservant, nor his ox, nor his ass, nor anything that is thy neighbor. Now let's go to Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter, read verses 13 and 14. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Let's go to Revelation chapter 22, verses 14 and 15. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without are dogs, and sorcerers, and whoremongers, and murderers, and idolaters, and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. So sisters and brothers, that's a reading of the law. If you can't remember none, anything else, remember two things. Get baptized in the name of Jesus and keep the law, and you will be guaranteed salvation. That's the simplicity of the word of God. And just like the lesson, sisters and brothers, today, See, we have gotten to the point, people have gotten to the point, they don't believe in knowing what they're doing. They don't believe and have no knowledge. They don't believe in doing anything according to the word of God. But the thing that, if you're going to be a servant of God, is one, it's, it, there are three things you have to have. And that's what this title of this lesson is. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Because you don't have no understanding. How can you, know, how can you teach something that you don't know about? And how can, you, how can you understand something that you never heard of? And how can you use something wisely if you don't possess it? This is what it's all about, sister and brother. Because I'm not going to lie to you. I'm looking at you too. And I'm seeing my Hebrew Israelite brothers. And it is depressing me. Look like everybody can get a long dishwag and tie it around his head and get out there and talk about I'm a Hebrew Israelite. <laughs> and I'm looking at this. And I'm looking at this. And I say, these brothers just don't have no understanding. I mean, none whatsoever. I watched a brother create an eternal life for rulership over some people. When the young man asked Jesus, what should I do to get eternal, to, to get eternal life? He's the first thing, uh, uh, he's a good master. What should I do to get eternal life? Jesus said, don't call me good. There ain't but one good, but that's God. Because he was man when he was in the flesh. But he said, but if you will enter into life, keep the commandments. This brother here, he's the leader of a big organization. I'm talking about big, not, not according to our type big. You know, the ones that run around with them purple uniforms on. He said that what that meant was you get to rule. 
I said, how can you uh, translate, keep the commandments, and eternal life? How can you say eternal life mean you're going to get the rule? Don't make sense to me. Why would I want to rule in this flesh and blood body for a little while when I can live as God forever? I said, I hear a lot of noise. I hear a lot of jingling and a lot of quotation, but I don't hear no wisdom when I'm looking at these brothers. Now, we're pouring salt on the, on the Sunday Christians, but I say if you find out you Israel and you still messed up, you're worse than the Sunday Christians. <clears throat> but we're going to deal with this because we have a problem, and this problem is we don't care nothing about knowing, about, knowing something before it come out of our mouth. Let's go into Proverbs, the first chapter. <clears throat> Proverbs chapter 1. And I've been saying I'm the old man of Israel, and I am. So I just hit my 80th birthday. And, uh, and most of the guys that came along with me are going up the river, sister and brother. It's all that simple. I can get the name and name. He's gone, and he's gone, and he's gone. And I look at these youngsters we get out here, I said, some of them shouldn't have never came. <laughs> because I'm not going to lie to you, sisters and brothers. It scares me. Proverbs chapter 1. Proverbs chapter 1. Because right now I'm hearing Gentiles and even a couple of Edomite rabbis saying that we are Israel. So why are you out there acting so ugly? Like somebody did something to you. Yeah, somebody did something to you. Your God did something to you. He said he was going to do this to you. If the Lord said he's going to punish you and bring pain on you, somebody got by the hand of other people, somebody got to do it. Who cannot do it? So who do we blame for what's happened to us? Our forefathers. Proverbs 1 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king uh -huh. of Israel. Go ahead. The Proverbs of Solomon, the son of David, king of Israel. Go ahead. To know wisdom and instruction. Uh -huh. To perceive the words of understanding. Pay attention to what he's saying now. To know wisdom and instruction, to, to receive the words of understanding. Go ahead. To receive the instruction of wisdom. To receive the instruction of wisdom. Look, this is something that you have to receive before you can pass it on, right. sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. Justice and judgment and equity. Go ahead. To give subtlety to the simple. Uh -huh. To the young man, knowledge and discretion. It's supposed to, it's supposed to give, a, you know, a, a, <clears throat> make the simple smile. And the young man, knowledge and discretion. You know what discretion is? Think something out before you do it. Think about it before you say it. Look before you jump. That's discretion. Make sure that the move you make is the right move. Go ahead and read. A wise man will hear and will increase learning. Go ahead. And a man of understanding shall attain unto wise counsel. That's, what it, that's, what it made, uh, uh, that's why he is wise. If you're wise, you listen and you increase understanding. And instead of trying to dispute, go ahead. To understand the proverb and the interpretation, uh -huh. the words of the wise and their dark things. You know, what's the proverb that's old? Uh, uh, the uh, sayings of the wise, of wise people, sister and brother. And this whole book that's written, the Bible is written by wise people. So you're supposed to study it so you can understand it. Go ahead. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, uh -huh. but fools despise wisdom and instruction. That's a big statement there. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Why is it that you have started your trip in knowledge when you fear God because you will find out who he is and what he will do to you if you don't obey him. Somebody got a nice little diamondback snake and, 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 and with rattles on it. Oh, he's so cute. You don't know it. But somebody said, you know, if he bites you, you're going to die. Whoa. Mm -hmm. Now you know about this snake because you know if he bites you, he will kill you. Same thing with the Lord, the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. 
but fools despise wisdom and instruction. Anybody don't want to be taught, the Bible calls them a fool. Go ahead and read. Now let's skip down rather to verse 20. Verse 20. And go ahead. Wisdom crieth without. Uh huh. She uttered her voice in the streets. Uh huh. She crieth in the chief place of concourse. Go ahead. In the openings of the gates. As wisdom is everywhere. All mm -hmm. you got to do is look and mm -hmm. listen. The wisdom is everywhere. It's all around you. All you have to do is look and listen, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. In the city she uttered her words, saying, uh -huh. How long, ye simple ones, will ye love simplicity? So how long, ye simple ones, mm -hmm. will you love simplicity? Go ahead. And the scorners delight in their scorning. And, and the scorners delight their scorning. And fools hate knowledge. And fools hate knowledge. Yeah, people, I don't care what that Bible say. How is that you don't, you don't care what the Bible say? You don't know what it say. I don't want to hear that. I listen to everything to find out whether it's valid or not. That's what a wise person do. But fools hate knowledge. You know, I'm, you know, I'm a, 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 a Baptist born. And when I die, I'm going to be a Baptist gone. And I always add a little thing to it, to the lake of fire. If you don't learn better, go ahead and read. Turn you at my reproof. Uh -huh. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known my words unto you. This is what counts, sister. The word, the truth of God is a real proverb. He said, turn ye of my reproof. Behold, I will pour out my spirit unto you. I will make known your, my word unto you. Because his spirit is his word, sister and brother. Right. Once you get some knowledge, then you know about spirit. You recognize it in his minute form. But if you don't have no knowledge, then you don't have nothing to be wise about. Let's go into Proverbs, the second chapter. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Proverbs chapter 2. And we're going to start reading at verse 1. Okay, go ahead. My son, if thou will receive my words and hide my commandments with thee. If you all receive my words, remember, it's all about the word. If you're going to become wise and you're going to have some knowledge, it all starts with the word of God. Go ahead and read. So that thou incline thine ear unto wisdom uh -huh. and apply thine heart to understanding. Go ahead. Yeah, if thou criest after knowledge and lifted up my, thy voice for understanding. So you cry after knowledge. You want to know something. And you're always asking for understanding. Go ahead and read. If thou seekest her as silver and searchest for her as for hid treasure. Go ahead. Then shalt thou understand the fear of the Lord. And find the knowledge of God. Now you have to seek it, sister and brother. You just can't come here and you listen to me and go home. You got to go back and you got to get in this book. Mm -hmm. And when you do, you're going to find knowledge. Then you're going to find the fear of the Lord because you're going to understand who you are dealing with, sister and brother. Because the God of this creation is a wise God. And everything come out of his mouth is to edify you. Go ahead and read. For the Lord giveth wisdom, uh -huh. out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. For the Lord giveth wisdom, and out of his mouth cometh knowledge and understanding. He don't speak no foolishness. Everything he said that's going to happen is going to happen, sisters and brothers. And I've proven that myself. That's like when the Lord called me to write the book, The Four Winds of Heaven. That was all written out of the prophecy and the knowledge of the prophets, sisters and brothers. And the Lord called it by his prophets the way it was, and man acted it out according to the letter. It's just like people are wondering what's going on or what's going to happen tomorrow. How this world is going to end? I know how it's going to end. You know why? Because I'm operating in the wisdom and the knowledge of the God of the creation. He wrote it down. You don't have to wonder about something. Go ahead and read what verse. Skip down to verse 10. Verse what? 10. Verse 10, go ahead. When wisdom entereth into thine heart, and knowledge is pleasant unto thy soul, discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. This, that's what it's saying. When you get you some wisdom and knowledge in your mind, you're going to become discreet. You're going to be preserved. You ain't going to be the big mouth speak before you know, before you hear. 
And with that alone, sisters and brothers, that's going to keep you, keep you from a whole lot of things that you don't like because you listen. Go ahead. That was, that was the end of 11. That was the end of 11? I'm sorry, 11. Sorry. Verse 11, go ahead. No, no. Discretion shall preserve thee, understanding shall keep thee. So what's going to preserve you? Discretion. You ain't going to rush into something and you don't know what's going on. And understanding is going to keep you, sister and brother. These things, the Lord is telling you how you have to behave. You have to listen. You have to know. Because it is his wisdom and his knowledge that's going to preserve you, sisters and brothers, and keep you out of the way of danger. Proverbs, the fourth chapter. Proverbs chapter four. And we're going to start reading at verse five. Because when I look, I'm watching YouTube. I said, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding is just a vain word. I just don't see it. I see the Israelites jumping. The modern day Christian. And they just as bad. Like it was a saying, like the old saying in the old days, the pot is calling the kettle black. You just as guilty. Verse 5, go ahead and read. Get wisdom, get understanding, uh -huh. forget it not. Neither decline from the words, neither decline from the words of my mouth. Now, this, this is where you get wisdom and knowledge and understanding from, from the mouth of God, sister and brother. Go ahead and read. Forsake her not. And she shall preserve thee. Uh -huh. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Listen, you seeing how what wisdom do and knowledge, it'll keep you out of trouble. It'll keep you from harming yourself. It'll keep you from a lot of things. Because sometimes you get in things and you and you start to suffer drama, and you say, Oh, I wish I hadn't done this. If you knew the consequences of doing it beforehand then you would not have suffered that drama. That's what it means it's going to preserve and keep you. Go ahead. Wisdom is the principal thing. Uh-huh. Therefore, get wisdom. Uh-huh. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, with all thy getting, get understanding. It's just like having a pistol, sister and brother. You know, you know this is a pistol. You know that, but you not, might not know what kind of harm that it can do. And you might not understand that if you should use it without thinking, it's going to bring some drama on you. It's all about knowing. This is what it's all about, knowing, and once you know something, how to use it. Even the word of God, sisters and brothers. You're going to know the truth. You just can't beat up on people that don't know. You can't use the word of God as a sword. You have to use it in love to soothe people. Let people understand this is for your good. Don't use it to beat people up. You ain't supposed to do that. But if you don't have no wisdom, you might have knowledge and no understanding. Let's go into Matthew chapter 24. Because I'm going to show you, once you know what's going on, that protects you from everything. Matthew chapter 24. Because this is a time going to come up on the world. It's called the Great Tribulation. And we're going to have some people doing some big stuff during that time. And if you don't know what's going on, you're going to get sucked up. This is when uh, uh, the apostles was telling Jesus about the temple. <laughs> Jesus already knew what was going to happen to the temple. 24 and 1. Matthew chapter 24 and 1. Okay, read it. And Jesus went out and departed from the temple. And his disciples came to him for to show him the buildings of the temple. Uh -huh. And Jesus said unto them, See ye not all these things? Go ahead. Verily I say unto you, there shall not be left here one stone upon another uh -huh. that shall not be thrown down. Now look, when did that happen? That happened in 70 AD, sisters and brothers. Titus took down Jerusalem and tore the temple down to the ground, didn't leave none of it. I know that. That's why I know that well and well, that these people are bumping their head on. 
and sticking notes in is not a part of the temple. Because the word of God, from out of his mouth, come wisdom. The word of God told me that that temple is not going to be there. And it is not. So when I read in history about Titus taking it down in 7 AD, I already knew it was supposed to happen. Why? Because the Lord says not going to be one stone left upon another. And not one. In fact, they're not even on the temple site. But then that's another lesson. But go ahead and read. And as he sat upon the Mount of Olives, the disciples came unto him privately, saying, Tell us, when shall these things be? Uh -huh. And what shall be the sign of thy coming and of the end of the world? Now they want to know, when's this temple going to be torn down? And when is going to be the time of your coming and of the end of the world? Because we know when he comes, it's going to be the end of the world as we know That's it. That's right. But the world is going to exist forever. But the end of the world as we know it. But he started out giving you a stern warning. Go ahead and read. And Jesus answered and said unto them, uh -huh. Take heed that no man deceive you. Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name. For many shall come in my name. Saying, I am Christ. Saying that I am the Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah. Go ahead and read. And shall deceive many. And shall deceive many. Where do you find these people at? Standing right here, why? Now you find them in the street. But the Lord is saying is, your biggest deceiver is going to be the one that come in my name. Therefore, ministers get away with murder. But we know to watch them. We know to scrutinize them. We know to fact check them. You know why? Because Jesus warned us that they're going to come in my name saying that I'm Christ and they're going to deceive me. So if you believe what come out of their mouth without checking them out, you're going to be deceived. And look at what's happening tomorrow, Sunday. It's the day of the sun for sun worshipers. But the whole world is going to come together on that day, and they don't have the wisdom to even go in the book and read in the Encyclopedia in history, what is Sunday? It said, die soul is the day of the sun. Sun worshippers, why is it that they picked the 25th day of December for the birthday of the Son of God? <laughs> if you look in history, that may tell you it is the day of the unconquered conquered sun. It is the longest day after the shortest day of the year. Now the sun is being reborn again. Sun worshippers. Jesus rose on Easter Sunday. But the people of knowledge know that he had to rise on the seventh day because that's all God gave man is seven days. After the seven thousand years, there will be no more species of man. Everybody will be God or whatever it is in the lake of fire. But I know that. You know why? I read it from the words that come out of the God that give wisdom and out of his mouth comes understanding. I know that tomorrow, nobody ever paid attention. Why is it that we call this Sunday? Nobody ever thought for a minute. You know why? It's because somebody standing behind a rostrum like this told them it is the Christian Sabbath day because Christ rose on Easter Sunday morning. They didn't get that from the pimp. In the street, out of hustlers of the prostitute, they got it from the one that's supposed to be standing in Moses' seat. Y'all understand? Big warning, but go ahead and read. What did it say? What, what verse was that? We have verse 6. Go ahead. And you shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled, uh -huh. for all these things must come to pass. So you're going to hear wars and rumors of wars. We've been hearing wars and rumors of wars yeah. ever since we've been here, haven't we? Right. But don't be troubled, for all these things are going to come to pass. Isn't that what's going on now? Look at what Russia doing to, to, and to uh, uh, Ukraine. Ukraine right now. But go ahead and read. But the end is not yet. Uh huh. Let's skip to 14. What verse was that? We just finished six. six. Yep. Let's skip down to verse 14. Verse 14, and go ahead. And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness unto all nations. So now, that is what 
Our job is. That's right. Gentiles can't teach it. No other people can teach it. The only one can spread this gospel into all the world are the children of Israel, God's chosen priest to all the sons of Adam. That's right. And that's what we're doing right now as a witness, sisters yeah. and brothers, because ain't up all, everybody's not going to hear about it. That's why we're baptizing people in the, the uh, uh, Philippines and in Africa. That's why we have people online from all over the world, Eastern and Western Europe, because this gospel must be preached in the all of the world, and God is doing it, sisters and brothers. And when this gospel is finished, what's going to happen? Go ahead. In all the world for a witness unto all nations, uh -huh. and then shall the end come. And then shall the end come. So now he's going to give you a real, real sign. So you'll know when the end is going to come. Read the next verse. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, uh -huh. spoken of by Daniel the prophet, uh -huh. stand in the holy place, whoso readeth, let him understand. Now tell me, the churches you come out of, did they read something like this? No. Why not? It's the New Testament. You're a New Testament Christian. And this is Christ that made the statement. That's right. That's right. He said, when you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation, stand in the holy place. Who shall read it? Let him understand. Mm -hmm. You don't know who this guy is? You don't know what a holy place is? Where is your wisdom and your knowledge? Skip down to verse 21. Because when you see this, something's going to jump off. Verse 21, go ahead. For then shall be great tribulation. For then shall be great tribulation. Go ahead. Such as was not since the beginning of the world uh -huh. to this time, no, nor ever shall be. That means it's going to be some tribulation so bad until there have never been anything on this earth was so destructive. Until then, and it's so destructive, there should never be another day like that. Mm -hmm. So whatever you think that happened among men, the genocide, ethnic cleansing, and the slaughter, this is going to be way worse. And you don't know about this? How bad is it going to be? Go ahead. And except those days should be shortened, uh -huh. there should no flesh be saved. And except those days shall be shortened, there shall no flesh be saved. Look like all of the servants of God should know this. That's right. When Jesus made this prophecy, there was nothing on, in, uh, on the earth that could kill all flesh, mm -hmm. sisters and brothers. But now... Everybody got weapons that'll kill all flesh. You know what they call? Nuclear weapon. <laughs> Everybody push the button. Lord don't want to see. Ain't going to be nobody here for him to come. That's right. But he ain't going to allow that to happen. Go ahead and read. But for the elect's sake, uh -huh. those days shall be shortened. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. The elect's sake. Go ahead and read. Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, here is Christ, or there, believe it not. Uh -huh. for, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall show great signs and wonders in so much that, if it were possible, they should deceive the very elect. Pay attention here. The Lord said, if anybody said he is, if he's in the way, don't believe it, because somebody's going to say, you know, Christ is back. You know, he is in the temple. He said, don't believe it. Because when this guy's in the temple, then the abomination will be in the holy place. The Lord said, when you see this, you better flee. And so he's going to do signs, sisters and brothers, in so much that if it was possible, it was to see the very elect. This, they're going to make a statue. People, I'm showing you how people set you up for a computer, uh, for, for uh, 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 to be deceived. They tell me, well, this statue, they're going to make a statue, they're going to walk and talk, this is going to be a computer. No, no, he's going to make a statue, and he's going to pull some stuff out that you ain't never That's seen. Right. So you don't know power. He's going to make this dead object walk mm -hmm. and talk. 
Then it's going to cause fire to come down from heaven in the sight of men. You ain't never seen this. It happens in the days of Job. So some guy get up there and mumbles up and wave his hand, and you see this statue, you know it wasn't nothing but rocks and stone. It get up and start walking and talk. That's got to be God. Then he's going to throw his hand up, whoom, fire come down in the sight of men. Might be kill some, mm -hmm. some people that's preaching the truth because the Lord said many are going to fall in his name. And you're going to say, whoa, that's got to be God. Mm -hmm. But if you are the very elect, you're going to say, mm-hmm, by time. Let me show you what makes you the very elect. Let's go into 1 Peter. The first chapter. First Peter, the first chapter. See, that's the whole thing. That's going to be a dangerous time. And if you don't have no knowledge, you can get in trouble with God because you can make a move that you have increased your common destruction. But if you have some knowledge, then you'll die by this guy rather than receive a mark that's called a mark of the beast. That's if you have some knowledge. So let me show you what's going to make you the very elect. First Peter, chapter 1, we're going to read verses 1 and 2. Okay, read. Peter, an apostle of Jesus Christ, uh -huh. to the strangers scattered throughout Pontus, and when he says strangers, this is talking about Israel. He wasn't talking. He, Paul was apostle to the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. You know, you come a stranger, that means Israel, like a tale and Obadiah to Esau, said, you stood on the gate and rejoiced when your brother became a stranger. Mm -hmm. That means you in strange lands right. now. Strange You're not where, you, where your uh, uh, nativity is. Right. But go ahead and read. To the strangers scattered throughout Pontus. Galatia, uh -huh. Cappadocia, Asia, and Bithynia. Go ahead. Elect according to the foreknowledge of God the Father. Elect according to what? The foreknowledge of God the Father. Finish that. Through sanctification of the Spirit. Uh huh. Unto obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Jesus Christ. Grace unto you and peace be multiplied. Now, what makes you elect? Foreknowledge of God. Foreknowledge. Mm -hmm. And how do you get this knowledge? Because you sanctified the word of God. You listened to it. That's you separated right. from all That's them right. lies. And you went for it. You didn't go for all them books that Solomon warned you not to deal with. That's right. And you obeyed it. And the Bible tells you a good understanding have all they that keep the commandments. That's right. So you know what's happening. So when this guy starts making statues walk, Fire come down from heaven, he cannot deceive you. You know why? Because you know about it. That's why you can't be deceived because you have full knowledge. Man cannot come and break in your house and get away with it when somebody warns you, hey, somebody gonna break in your house tonight, you be laying there waiting on it. Full knowledge. That is what make you very elect. Israel is the Lord's elect. But a whole lot of Israelites are going to receive the mark of the beast. But the very elect, because they already have prior knowledge of it, they ain't going there. If you get the mark with my right hand, hey, you can put mark all over my body if you want. But you have to do it once you done chopped the head off. Because <laughs> they ain't rolling with what you're right. trying to deal with. Right. You like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <laughs> Do your worst. That's right. Come on with it. Because you know that if it kill you, the long as you're going to stay dead, it's three and a half years. You know that. That's why Abraham was going to kill Isaac, because he knew that God was going right. to raise Isaac back up, because he had promised him that in Isaac shall your seed be, be called. called. Right. Now you're going to tell me that your seed is going to uh, go through Isaac, and the covenant is going to be made through Isaac, and you're going to kill him. If you do, you're going to raise him up, because God cannot lie. Right. Skip it, I'm cutting his throat. Right. The angel had to stop it. Because of foreknowledge. 
This is why the Lord tells you to get wisdom and knowledge and understanding. But instead of this people increasing knowledge, they've gone backwards. Let's go into Jeremiah, the eighth chapter. Because all I see, sisters and brothers, a bunch of children out here playing with yep, the word of God. Right. It's just like a child having an automatic weapon and don't understand mm -hmm. what he got. That's right. Well, I think I'm, I'm pointing at you. Hmm, I think I pulled this trigger. Brrr, you done killed 20 people. Because you're handling a weapon and you don't have no knowledge of what it's supposed to do. And you're not wise enough not to know, to know not to point it at somebody or pull the trigger. Ignorance, sisters and brothers, is dangerous. And most people don't understand that. Extremely dangerous. Although old saying, what you don't know won't hurt you. That's the biggest lie I've ever been told. Everything that happened to me that hurt me or I did that hurt me, had I known it was going to hurt me, I wouldn't have did it. That's right. It's all that simple. Jeremiah 8, Jeremiah chapter 8, and we're going to start at verse 5. Jeremiah 8 and 5. Okay, go ahead. Why then is this people of Jerusalem slidden back by a perpetual backsliding? Uh-huh. They hold fast deceit. They refuse to return. And that's what that's our situation now. We're in a perpetual backslide. They hold fast deceit. Won't give up deceit. Mm -hmm. This people. And they refuse to return to the Lord. I'm looking at all these brothers and find out they're Israelite. Now they want to throw all the other nations in the lake of fire. Right. Show his ignorance. God shows you to save them. Now you're going to kill them all? That's right. Then you're going to turn around and see the Hebrew Israelites are black. But the American Indians are Hebrew Israelites. The Mexicans and the Puerto Ricans are Israelites. Wait a minute, brother. Last time I looked at an American Indian and, and a Mexican and a Puerto Rican, they look white. They don't look white, but they ain't black. You got to remember, God told you who you was going to look like. But these are Hebrew Israelites that out there slamming everybody else. So what made you decide you're going to save the Americans, the Native Americans, right. and the Mexicans? Right. <laughs> don't you know the Mexicans, are, the father of the Mexicans are Castilian, which is Spaniard? which teamed up with the Aztecs, they still Gentile. You are what your father is. So what is it, people? They are backsliding, uh -huh. sisters and brothers. Perpetually, that means they haven't even made a break. And we hold fast to deceitful lies and we refuse to let it go. Go ahead and read. I hearkened and heard, but they spake not aright. This is what people don't understand. The Lord is listening here. Go ahead. No man repented him of his wickedness, uh -huh. saying, what have I done? Everyone turned to his course as the horse rushes into the battle. So nobody, nobody acknowledges what our forefathers done. What have I done? I'm innocent. All them Hebrews out there saying they're innocent. Ain't nobody did nothing. Right. Look at the white man have done. White man, this white. I'm gonna tell you something, boy. Ham was your biggest enemy. Mm -hmm. That'll let you know you're plum ignorant. He went over there and, and raped the continent. He didn't rape no. nothing. The Hamites sold you. Yeah. Brother Runtown, Islam, my brother. I went, I was working when I was. Doing heating and cooling, I was at this place one time, this Muslim place, and you got an Arab guy coming in and fix the uh, 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 stove or something. They look, my brother, don't you know that Ishmael was the biggest slave trader on the planet? Mm -hmm. They went and got you, hunted you down. Now you're off into his religion. That's what I'm saying. The backslid, sisters mm -hmm. and brothers, we have no wisdom. We have no knowledge. And understanding is a foreign word in my mouth. Go ahead and read. Yeah, the stork in the heaven north her appointed time. Uh -huh. And the turtle and the crane and the swallow observe the time of their coming. No, the animals, these birds he named, they know what they're supposed mm -hmm. to do. 
When the weather gets ready to change, they, they fly to another warmer climate mm -hmm. until it's over with. But what about my people? Go ahead. But my people know not the judgment of the Lord. They know not the judgment of the Lord. What is the judgment of the Lord? We're the only one that he gave this to. He said, Israel only have I known. He said, I gave my word to Jacob and to Israel. I have not done this with any nation. That's any other nation. So we suppose to know this. But we ain't as smart as the, the bird. So look what the Lord said. Go ahead. How do you say we are wise? How do you say, priest, that is picked to save the whole creation, that you are wise mm. when you say they all going to get cut off but right. you? Go ahead. And the law of the Lord is with us. And the law of the Lord is with us. And all you think about is enslaving somebody and beating somebody right. and ruling over somebody. Go ahead and read. Lo, certainly in vain made he it. The pen of the scribes uh -huh. is in vain. So in vain, Jeremiah wrote this That's book. Because right. there's nobody go read it. And if they do, they got a little God in their head that's going to reinterpret it. Make it something else. Go ahead and read. The wise men are ashamed. Uh -huh. They are dismayed and taken. Go ahead. Lo, they have rejected the word of the Lord and what wisdom is in them. That's what it is. Your wise men are ashamed, sisters and brothers. They're dismayed and taken. They have said, look, they have rejected the word of God. So what wisdom is in them? No. Only reason you know that you're Israel is because you find it out in this book. Why is it you're going to go in and cherry pick Israel mm -hmm. and forsake the rest of them? That's what you call willful sinning. And you don't even know what's going to happen to a willful sinner, sisters and brothers. So he have rejected the word of God. So where is their wisdom? But they are, they're acting like they're wise. The streets are full of them. That means they got a lot of zeal, don't they? Yes. Paul wrote about this. Let's go into Romans, the 10th chapter. Romans chapter 10. And Paul is lamenting for his people, just like I find myself lamenting, sisters and brothers. I, I used to get angry. I don't get angry no more. I just feel bad. And I grieve for my people. That's because I've been looking at this Israelite for a lot of years, sisters and brothers. 54 years is a long time to look at somebody. I've been aware for all of these years and I only see worse. That's being a, back, a perpetual backslide that's getting worse and worse and worse and worse. The people that call themselves Christian and don't know what a Christian is, and the Hebrew Israelites that spit on Christian, and they don't know what it is either. The Buddhist people have rejected the knowledge of God. There ain't no wisdom in them. Romans 10 and verse 1. 10 and 1. Okay, read it. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is uh -huh. that they might be saved. Then I pray for the same thing, sisters and brothers. But go ahead and read. For I bear them record uh -huh. that they have a zeal of God. Go ahead. But not according to knowledge. They have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. On average... Corner, just about in our neighborhood, you got a church. That's don't you? right. And the internet and YouTube is overran mm -hmm. with Hebrew Israelites, right. ain't it? Yes. Look at all this zeal. But they don't have no knowledge. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For they being ignorant of God's righteousness uh -huh. and going about to establish their own righteousness, Go ahead. have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. And that's what's happening. If you're ignorant of God's righteousness, you come up with your own brand of righteousness. Yeah. Like people say, sin is drinking and smoking. That's not sin. Sin is a transgression of the law. God told Israel, you know, I'm sending you to save everybody. But Israel saying, we're going to kill everybody. That's right. That's creating your own righteousness. Mm -hmm. 
It's just like I'm pretty sure when the veil of the temple ripped when Jesus died, Pharisees just went up and sewed it back up and kept killing animals. Go ahead and read. For Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believe it. That law that he ended was the law of animal sacrifice. But go ahead and read. For Moses describing the righteousness which is of the law, uh -huh. that the man which doeth those things shall live by them. Now, but, I, I'm going to say this, and we can read this over. But the whole thing is, they sold the veil back up and kept dealing. You said, well, that's back in there, but we're on the new covenant. Watch when the Passover comes. See what the Hebrews, how they're going to have Passover. They're going to go out to the meat store and they're going to buy them a lamb. When we had a meat house, they come and bought the lamb and one of them even asked me, do you have some blood? <laughs> what was he going to do with the blood? It better be his own house because if it's his apartment, he's going to get evicted. Yeah. <laughs> they still Eating the lamb, they don't kill it. Well, some of them might be still doing it. I don't know about it. But you know what it's saying? That they don't believe in the new covenant. So they're just continuing to do it. Not in the days of Jesus. They're doing it right now. Pay attention. All these Hebrews on Passover time are going to be eating lamb. Instead of taking the bread and the wine. Go ahead and read. For Moses described the righteousness which is of the law, that the man which doeth those things shall live by them, but the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise. Go ahead. Say not in thine heart who shall ascend unto heaven, that is, to bring Christ down from above, uh -huh. or who shall descend into the deep, Go that ahead. is, to bring Christ up again from the dead. Go ahead. But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, uh -huh. even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Now, when Paul quoted this, people tried to use this. They said that Paul was telling you, you ain't got to keep the law. But no, Paul quoted Moses. Because the law is what the Lord put out there. And if you got faith, you're going to walk in it. Let's show you. This is what Paul quoted. Let's go into Deuteronomy, the 30th chapter. That's why you have to have some understanding. That's why Peter warned you against Paul White. So sometimes it's hard to understand. And those that don't have no understanding, they twist it like they do other scripture. So Paul was not kicking against the law he was, that Moses put forth. Paul was co-signing the law. that Moses, that the Lord used Moses to put forth. Because the Lord is telling this, look, I'm going to bring blessings and cursing. If you do what I say, you're going to be blessed. You're going to be ruling everything. That's what these Hebrew brothers want to do now. You blew that, brother. When God put it on the table, you kicked the table over. Now you're trying to reclaim it too late. Well, we're going to be running this world. You ain't going to be running nothing. Jesus is going to be running this world. Mm -hmm. And the ones that's going to help him are the saints. Those are the people in the first resurrection. Right. So this whole world is going to be ran by God. What God? Jesus, which is God, and everybody mm -hmm. in the first resurrection, which will be God. That's who's going to run this thing. But the thing about it, sisters and brothers, people use Paul and say, well, they don't understand his words, so they think that Paul came against Moses. But Moses is telling you here, look, after you've gone through the blessings and the curses, but you end up with the curses, then this is what's going to happen. Deuteronomy 30 and 1. Go ahead and read. And it shall come to pass, when all these things are come upon thee, uh -huh. the blessing and the curse, Go ahead. which I have set before thee, and thou shalt call them to mind among all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath driven thee. See, when all these have come upon you now, and you're going to remember among the nations where the Lord has driven us. I know I do, because I read it, and what, is, and what the Lord wrote has happened to us. Skip down to verse 5, or 3 rather, and read it. That then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity. Then 
He's going to turn our captivity. That's when, in the, uh, from, when we're among these nations. Go mm -hmm. ahead and read. And have compassion upon thee. Uh -huh. And will return and gather thee. And from send all. you a Moses. And will return and gather thee. And will return and gather you. Go ahead. From all the nations. Whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. So now, when will Israel be gathered, sisters and brothers? When the Lord returns. When the Lord returns. Not a day before. Right. I was looking at Hebrew last night. Yeah, when we go back to the land, we got some people that go to Ghana. And Ghana, that is not your land. Well, we calling you back to our assistant brother to Nigeria, to uh, Nigeria, and to uh, and, and, and and what is this place they set up for uh, returning slave? Well, I must be getting old. I can't remember that now. It's in Ghana. What? It's in one place is in Ghana. Ghana ain't what I'm talking about. You ain't old as me. You supposed to remember. <laughs> I don't forgot, it'll come to me tonight when I'm in the bed. <laughs> but anyway, they're telling you to go back there. You understand? Telling you to go back there. That's on the, that's on the main African continent. That is not where you live. Why do you think the Hutus tried to exterminate the Tutsis? They are not the same people. The Ethiopians tried to exterminate the Philosophers. They are not the same people. You got ham against Shem. But we need to be getting ready to go back. Go where? Did you read verse 3? Yes. Read it again. The, that then the Lord thy God will turn thy captivity and have compassion upon thee and will return and gather thee from all the nations whither the Lord thy God hath scattered thee. So the Lord he's talking about is Jesus, sister and brother. Skip down to verse 8 and read it. Verse 5. Uh, verse 5, brother, and read it. And the Lord thy God will bring thee into the land which thy fathers possessed. Uh -huh. And thou shalt possess it. And he will do thee good and multiply thee above thy father. And that's going to happen. This is not your last stop. This is not your permanent residence. We have a land. We have a country. We have a nation. We have somebody, some place to go. It's just that somebody else is occupying it at the time. But the Lord going to fix that when he comes. And when you get back there, you think you're going to be able to do what you want. You have to do what you didn't want to do at the first. Skip down to verse 8. Verse 8 and go ahead. And thou shalt return and obey the voice of the Lord uh -huh. and do all his commandments which I command thee this day. Now you see them same commandments that I commanded you by the name, by the hand of Moses, when you go back, you got to keep them same commandments. You're going to keep his commandment, like I said, which I command you this day. There ain't nothing new. God is omnipotent. He is perfect. He is not going to give you anything that's flawed that it have to be changed. But he gave the first generation is valid in the last generation. Skip down to verse 11 and go ahead. For this commandment which I command thee this day, uh -huh. it is not hidden from thee, neither is it afar off. Go ahead. It is not in heaven that thou shouldest say, who shall go up for us to heaven and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it. Now, isn't this what Paul said? He just threw Jesus in there. Isn't that correct? Mm -hmm. It's not hid for you. It's not in heaven that somebody have to say, who's going who to go to heaven and bring this word back? Neither is it over the sea? That somebody going to say, who's going to go over the sea and get it and bring it back? Go ahead. Neither is it beyond the sea that thou shouldest say, who shall go over the sea for us go ahead. and bring it unto us that we may hear it and do it? Uh -huh. But the word is very nigh unto thee. But what's near unto you? The word. Go ahead. It's very nigh unto thee in thy mouth and in thy heart that thou mayest do it. That's the word of God. It's laying in your lap there. All you got to do is do it. You don't have to, who going to go and bring this back mm -hmm. to? Well, I'm waiting for the Holy Ghost. The angel ain't going to come and pop nothing in your head no more. 
Like people, whoop, the, the Holy Ghost just spoke to you. What did he say? Tell me what he said, mister. And when he said you read in that book, well, I don't see that's in there. That means I don't know what spirit spoke to you, but it wasn't holy. Because the Lord said he called the end from the beginning. Ain't nothing new under the sun. Ain't that what Solomon said? Especially when it comes to doctrine. So now, when you go back, you have still got to obey these commandments because what? The Lord don't change, sisters and brothers. So Paul was telling you that. These people have a zeal, but they ain't got no knowledge. And he quoted Moses, and we just read Moses. Now let's go into Isaiah, the fifth chapter. Because it's all about knowledge, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding, sister and brother. That's what it's all about. If you don't have that, then you cannot please God. Because first thing, if you're going to please God, you got to know that he's there. You got to believe that. And if you, and then once you know he's there, you got to believe that what he said must be obeyed. You got to understand that. But this is what has left from among men, and Israel don't have none of it left. Every time I look at YouTube, I see that, and it grieves me. All we're about now is having fun. Even when you go to church, everybody want to jump up and down and, 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 and blame it on the Holy Ghost while they dance all over the place. You do that in the joint. We, we, we are people that, love, people that love the party. Verse 11, go ahead. Warn to them that rise up early in the morning, that they may follow strong drink, that continue unto night to wine and flame them. Go ahead. And the harp and the vial, the tabard and pipe and wine are in their feasts. Go ahead. But they regard not the work of the Lord, neither consider the operation of his hand. He said, warn to these people that love good time and party. But they have not considered the operation of the Lord's hand. Mm -hmm. Ain't nobody looked around them. Our people don't know about the European Union. We haven't considered it. And what's happened? Go ahead. Therefore, my people are gone into captivity uh -huh. because they have no knowledge. Why are we in captivity? Because we have no knowledge. Because the white man raped the continent of Africa. Wait because. a minute. Where they got you from, you, wouldn't, you never would have been there if, had you not obeyed the Lord. You would have still been in Jerusalem and in Samaria, which is the northern kingdom. But because we, don't, because we hate knowledge, we have gone into captivity. Go ahead and read. And their honorable men are famished, uh -huh. and their multitude dried up with thirst. When your honorable men are famished, they, in other words, they're, they're famished and they dried up. They, they're dumb too. The people you're looking for wisdom, they ain't got none. The people that call themselves Christians going to tell you when Christ told the people, when they asked him for a sign, I'm going to be, I give you but one sign. That's the sign that he was the Christ. Just as Jonah was in the belly of the whale three days and three nights, I'm going to be in the heart of the earth for three days and three nights. But you got all these preachers, preachers that call themselves Christians saying that Jesus died on Good Friday and rose Easter Sunday morning. Get me three days and three nights from Friday to Sunday. We have beat up on them for years and they still get it. And the, some of them say, well, the only, the only thing that's important that he rose. Look here, man, you still ain't straightening out the line. But those are the people we hold in honor. They are famished because they refuse to eat and drink. They don't have no knowledge. Go ahead and read. Therefore, hell hath enlarged herself uh -huh. and opened her mouth without measure. Go ahead. And their glory and their multitude and their pomp and he that rejoiceth shall descend into it. So what is hell? That's a state of condition. You know, that's about thinking. When you think hell, you think the devil is, is a Look, the state, hell is a state of condition. It is hell 
when you got a job and you, you got to decide whether you're going to pay rent or eat. It's hell, you got a house and a pop and you got so many locks on it because you're scared somebody's going to break in on you. If you get a fire, get a house get caught in a fire, by the time you get through navigating them locks, you'll be burned up. It's hell when you're scared of your own children. When they shooting you up, your children killing one another. That's hell. Why are they out there killing and doing all this stuff? Because they was not taught the law. Had they been raised up in the law, in the word of God, they wouldn't be out there. Like Solomon said, train a child the way he should go, and when he grow up, he won't depart from it. They don't know. They haven't been taught. The parents haven't been taught. Generations have passed by now. Nobody has taught the law of God. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. Because they don't have no wisdom, which is the word of God. That's why they're out there, sisters and brothers. Had they been raised right, they'll be right. I've seen a lot of young people grow up in the Israel of God. They was babies. Now they done had babies, which got babies. <laughs> They're still here. They're walking in the, in the word of God. They ain't all in jail. They are teachers. They're running a the feast committee. They're out spreading the word of God because they were raised in the word of God. And they ain't going to depend, depart from it. Go ahead and read. Let's finish 14. That's verse 14. Yep. But my people have gone, in knowledge, uh, gone into captivity. Why? Because they have no knowledge, sister and brother. And as it was in the day when Jesus came, in his generation, nothing has changed, sisters and brothers. When Jesus came, his generation was void of knowledge. <coughs> and we, this generation, the same thing, void of knowledge. We don't listen. All we do is condemn. I see my brothers out there. Hebrew Israelite, they ain't out there talking about turning to the Lord. They condemning people. Well, we're going to get you. you we're going to put our foot on your neck. We're going to do this here. You did to us this, this to us, and you did that to us. Nothing about a bunch of condemners. But they don't pay no attention when somebody come and teach the truth. They find something wrong with them. They found that in the days of Jesus. Let's go into Matthew, the 11th chapter. I have a problem with people that hold doctrines about condemning somebody. Well, we're going to deal with the, with the uh, 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 sororities. We're going to deal with this. You shouldn't have no birthdays. You shouldn't honor mother and father. Where you read that at? Thanksgiving is pagan. It might be, but the Bible don't say it, so I don't even concern myself with it one way or the other. You understand? But you want to condemn, you want to condemn, you want to condemn. And no matter how this people is approached, they try to find a flaw with it. Matthew's 11, and we're going to start reading at verse 16. Matthew's 11 and verse 16. Go ahead. But where unto shall I liken this generation? Uh huh. It is like unto children sitting in the market. Go ahead. And calling unto their fellows. Uh huh. And saying, We have piped unto you, and ye have not danced. Go ahead. We have mourned unto you, and ye have not lamented. So look, how, how, what generation can I compare this generation? I'm saying to the Lord, you can compare your, compare your generation to this generation. <laughs> it's just like if you play music, they ain't going to dance, something wrong with it. And if you mourn to them, they're not going to lament because they think that ain't nobody guilty. We are all innocent. Go ahead and read. For John came neither eating nor drinking. Uh -huh. And they say, he hath the devil. Nobody listened to what John was teaching. Mm -hmm. They just know he wasn't living like everybody else. So mm -hmm. he came, he, uh, uh, he uh, ate locusts and, and honey. He got a devil. He didn't drink no whiskey or no wine. 
But still, they say he got a devil. But look what Jesus said. Go ahead and read. The son of man came eating and drinking. Uh -huh. And they say, behold, a man gluttonous Go ahead. and a wine bibber, uh -huh. a friend of publicans and sinners. Listen, I came eating and drinking. What they call me? A greedy man. Mm -hmm. Like to eat all the time. And he's a wine head. Always drinking wine. Mm. And he must love the sinners because he's always hanging out among them. They never paid attention that the righteous don't need saving. It is the sinner that mm. needs saving. Right. About to go sip some wine and bring this gospel to him. So be it. I'm doing my job. But they never listen to what he said. But we'll finish that. A friend of publicans and sinners. Uh huh. But wisdom is justified of her children. But wisdom is justified of her children. I remember when we was in the old place. We had the guy sitting out under the tree out there, drinking beer. I walks out there. Hey man, can I have a can of that beer? Everybody like. Uh yeah. I took one and said I'll start sipping the beer. And they loved us over there. Yep. Some of them came in and sat out at that word. I told him, brother, you know, you ain't like them other preachers out there been sitting for a while. I just got to tell you this, man. I had to come in and hear what you had to say. Because <laughs> you didn't come in and condemn us and try to call us a bunch of sinners and for smoking and drink. And you sat out and you had a can of beer. A couple of times I went out there and said, look, man, y'all got some beer now. I said, look, let's hand it up and get some. I didn't say I'm going to give it to you. Right. <laughs> we put them few dollars together that they had, and I put my few dollars. You understand? They told the guy that the real estate, you know, old Reb ain't like them other preachers, man. We like him. <laughs> he must have been a gangster. You can tell the way he wears that. <laughs> we threw... Clothes and get away and food for all the years we was there. And the only two incidents we had was between people in the Israeli God. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they would not break into the cars. They would not mess with the young folks. They would not disrespect nobody. And they watched over us. Because I realized the people in the con congregation, they was getting the gospel. Why can't I go out there and talk? And I didn't just drink beer. I talked some book to them. And they listened. But this the way it have to be, sisters and brothers. Don't look at what the wise, the children of wisdom do sometimes. Listen to what they say while they're doing it. You might learn something instead of just condemning. Oh, John the Baptist, he's, he got a devil. Jesus, he's a wine bibber and, and a gluttonous man. All he won't do is eat and drink. But nobody listened to what he said, sisters and brothers. Because if they had known what he was doing, then they would have known that he was teaching the gospel and showing them what God required. Let's go on to Ephesians, the fifth chapter. Ephesians, the fifth chapter. I used to hang on the fence out there, talk to everybody. They just couldn't believe it. We ain't never seen no preacher like you. You don't act like a preacher. What does a preacher act like? It's because I understand what Jesus said, that the righteous don't need saving. One that is not sick don't need a physician. I'm not after the one that know it. That's why out of all these years, I used to have a policy, and I still have it. I always tell the brothers, I don't want, do not want you to go into no Israelite class and jump them. Now, if they're in the streets, it's one thing, but I don't want you to go in their house. You know why? Because at least they know they're Israel. Sadly, I'm understanding that ain't enough. <laughs> but we take what we can get. Ephesians 5 and verse 1. Go ahead and read. Be ye therefore followers of God. As dear children. Now, be fathers of God as dear children. You know, like a child, when you bring him up, he do everything your parents said on it. Mm -hmm. Skip down to verse 5 and go ahead. For this ye know, 
that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor a covetous man who is an idolater hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. So apparently some people don't, li don't, don't, don't listen to their sister and brother. You got to keep the law. Go ahead and read. Let no man deceive you with vain words. For because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. If you keep doing these things, the Lord going to deal with you if you are blessed. But if he lets you get, a, get by with it, doesn't mean he, you are marked for the lake of fire. You have to keep this law. Skip down to verse 11 and read it. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness but rather reprove them. See, when somebody's doing wrong, tell them you're doing wrong. You understand? That's one thing that went out in the old class. Some guys had a van. They had a sister there trying to rape them. Me and the brother went out there and took the uh, girl out of the guy going to pull one of these. And I said, look, man, what if this was your sister or your mama? But you want somebody to do this? Oh, man, this is my old lady. That's an issue. Then if she is your lady, then why is it that you're going to let all these other guys defile her? And you even in the public. And we took her out. And they didn't do nothing. You know why? Because we're men of God. We are not going to allow wrong to go down and don't make no attempt to stop it. They have to be stopped. They have to be rebuked. They just have to do it. I had to control some of the brothers, though. They wanted to go upside them brothers. No, you can't do that, man. You don't want to be like them. Right. What verse was that? We just finished 11. Skip down to verse 14 and go ahead. Wherefore he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Now he wants you to awake. And Christ going to give you life. Go ahead and read. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Now, that you walk, you know, walk circumspectly. In other words, know where you're going. Mm -hmm. Don't walk as a fool just going to walk into something you don't know where you're getting into. Go ahead and read. Redeeming the time because the days are evil. Yes, sir. Go ahead. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Now, pay attention. A lot of people don't understand what the will of the Lord is. That's why it said, be ye not unwise. Understand what the will of the Lord is. The will of the Lord is what he told you. He wants you to keep his commandments, his laws, and his statutes. He wants you to love your sister and brother, even your enemy. That don't mean you get up and kiss all of them. No, that ain't love. Love is the fulfillment of the law. Don't do to your enemy what you don't want him to do to you. Don't be unwise, but understand what the will, or what the will of God is. Go ahead and read. And be not drunk with wine. Wherein is access, but be filled with the Spirit. Be not drunk with wine. Wherein access, that means you can drink a little, but don't be getting drunk, okay? But be filled with the Spirit. What Spirit is that that he wants you to be filled with? We're going to show you. Let's go into St. John, the sixth chapter. St. John, chapter six. People running around in churches, twisting and falling all over and twitching and Lobbing at the mouth and falling over chair, they're full of the Holy Ghost. Boy, God sure make you act strange. <laughs> Why does the Lord want you to do something? You go fall over chair, you get up, you got a knot on your head. We're going to show you the, the, the spirit that should fill you. St. John 6, and we're going to start at verse 48. St. John chapter 6 and verse 48. Read it. I am the bread of life. Uh-huh. I am the bread of life. Skip down to verse 51 and go ahead. I am the living bread which came down from heaven. Go ahead. If any man eat of this bread, he shall live forever. Uh-huh. And the bread that I will give is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. Now, we know you can't bite Jesus' arm off. He ain't around for us right. to take our bite, so we be cut off. That's it? right. But go ahead and read. The Jews therefore strove among themselves, saying, uh -huh. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? Uh -huh. How can this man give us his flesh to eat? So we're going to get right down to it. Skip down to verse 63. Verse 63 and read it. Go ahead. It is the spirit that quickened it. It's the spirit that quickened it? The flesh profited nothing. The flesh profited nothing. 
the words that I speak unto you, uh -huh. they are spirit and they are life. So I'm not telling you to take a bite out of my arm. I'm telling you to consume this word because this word that I'm giving you, it is spirit, sisters and brothers. Mm -hmm. And what does the spirit accelerate into? Skip down to verse 66 and go ahead. From that time, many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Uh-huh. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, will ye also go away? Go ahead. Then Simon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Lord, to whom shall we go? Go ahead. Thou hast the words of eternal life. Thou have the words of eternal life. That's what's going to get you eternal life. You're going to hear this word from God, and you're going to obey it and walk in it, and you're going to become an immortal at the time of punishment. Just for listening and hearing. That's why, that's, where, that's why I told you all them things we started out with in the first chapter of Proverbs. It is for you to do all of these things so you can get eternal life. And it comes down to simplicity. Hear my words and walk in them. So the spirit that fills you is the word of God. Fill your mind. It is with you. And everywhere you go, it's going to be with you. That makes you wise. And you're going to walk like a wise person because you're going to walk with discretion. You're going to talk with discretion. That is your wisdom. Let's go into Deuteronomy, the fourth chapter. Lord has put all this, He give you all the ingredients to become God. And ain't nobody listening, sisters. It's all here. All you have to do is open this book and read it, digest it with your mind, and walk in it. Don't add nothing to it or take nothing from it. Four and one. Deuteronomy 4 and verse 1. Okay, read. Now therefore hearken, O Israel, unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you. Go ahead. For to do them, that ye may live and go in and possess the land which the Lord God of your fathers giveth you. He said, I want you to listen now. Understand this and do all that I said. That you might go in the land and you might enjoy it. You would mm -hmm. even stay in it. All That's you had right. to do was what I told you. And look what he said. Go ahead. You shall not add unto the word which you, I command you. You shall not add unto the word which I command you. Go ahead. Neither shall you diminish aught from it. That means you shall not take anything from it. Go ahead and read. That you may keep the commandments of the Lord your God, uh -huh. which I command you. He said, I want you to deal with it exactly the way I gave it to you. I don't need nobody to paraphrase it or adjust it or expand on it. Just do it like I said. Skip down to verse 5. Verse 5 and go ahead. Behold, I have taught you statutes and judgments, uh -huh. even as the Lord my God commanded me. Go ahead. That ye should do so in the land whether ye go to possess it. Now, I done told you everything you need to do before you even got to the land. All this was told to the people in the wilderness. Go ahead and read. Keep therefore and do them, uh -huh. for this is your wisdom and your understanding. I want you to keep my commandments and my statutes and do them because this is is your wisdom is un and understanding. That's right. This is, go ahead and read. In the sight of the nation. In the sight of all the nation. Go ahead. Which shall hear all these statutes and say, surely this great nation is a wise and understanding people. And when they hear all of these statutes that I've given you and watch you walking in them, they're going to say, surely this is a wise and understanding people. Is anybody saying that about us now? Everybody think we are the fool at the ball. Why are we supposed to be looked upon and thought as a wise and understanding people? All we had to do, sisters and brothers, was obey God. And then the people would have looked upon you, then they would have wanted to know about your God. Because once you obeyed him, he said he's going to open his windows up and pour out blessing on you. You ain't going to be able to receive the blessing. They're going to be coming so hard and so fast. And the other people are going to look at you and say, hey, I want that. 
How is it that y'all, everything succeed with y'all? Everything is good with y'all? They said, well, because our God is doing this. Why is he doing, to you, doing this to you? Because this is what he told us to do. And they want to read that law and everything. Hey, we're going to do the same thing because we want the same blessing. That's the way it was supposed to be. But we were supposed to teach them. Let's go into Jose, the fourth chapter. We were supposed to teach them this, sisters and brothers. But we didn't. And being that we didn't teach them, then we suffer the consequences. That's why I look at my Hebrew brothers. Why are you out there hollering and screaming at everybody? It's between us and our God. They ain't got nothing to do with it. Like Jesus told Pilate, tell me, don't you know I can <laughs> crucify you and let you go? He said, look, I had the power to let you crucify and let you go. He said, look, you wouldn't have no power at all. I can pray to my God, to my Father. He sent me 12 legions of angels. Then Pilate got smart. He started trying to let him off. Because he found out it wasn't about what he did right. to Jesus. It's what the Father had already said, and Jesus had agreed with it before he became man that this had to happen to save his creation. So it's not about you and the other people. This is about you and your God. Because you're supposed to teach the other people. You are. Jose 4 and verse 1. 4 and 1. Go ahead and read. Hear the word of the Lord, ye children of Israel. Uh -huh. For the Lord hath a controversy with the inhabitants of the land. Uh -huh. Because there is no truth. No, 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 listen. He said the Lord have a controversy with the holy. With the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, go ahead. Nor mercy. Nor mercy. Nor knowledge of God in the land. Nor knowledge of God in the land. By they, had, they had opted to other gods. Go mm -hmm. ahead and read. By swearing uh -huh. and lying and killing and stealing and committing adultery. Wait they, a minute now. We have something. See, we didn't do this until this white man. Uh -uh. The Lord told me we did this before we, were, <laughs> before we even got thrown out of the land. By swearing, by lying, and killing, and stealing, and committing adultery. Go ahead and read. They break out, and blood touches blood. And they blood, and they murdered one another. Mm -hmm. This didn't start in the captivity system, brother. This was when we was a nation, and no other people ruled over us or influenced us. We was all, we was ruled over by God, but even he wasn't, in, wasn't able to influence us. Because we sinned against him. Skip down to verse 5. Verse 5 and go ahead. Therefore shall thou fall in the day. Yes, sir. And the prophet also shall fall with thee in the night. So I'm going to destroy you and your prophets. Go, they lied to you. Go ahead. And I will destroy thy mother. And I'm going to destroy your mother. That's your land. Go ahead. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. We just read that twice, didn't we? Yeah. Go ahead and read. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, uh -huh. I will also reject thee. Because you have rejected knowledge, I'm going to reject you. Go ahead and read. That thou shalt be no priest to me. Seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God, I will also forget thy children. I'm going to reject you because you have rejected knowledge. And you shall not be no priest anymore to me, being that you have forgotten the law mm -hmm. of your God. Why did he make us priests so we can teach the law to the rest of the sons of Adam and save them? But being that we have forgotten the law and we reject against God, then he said, look, I will also reject ye that thou shalt be no more priest to me, seeing thou have forgotten the law of thy God I will also forget your children. All of a sudden, now people remember who we are. But when I start, when nobody running all over the internet and everywhere else talking about the black people are the real Jews or the real Israelites, they forgot about you. And what they knew about you, they wouldn't tell you because you forgot. And wasn't nobody going to turn you on. So now, you were supposed to be the priest, sisters and brothers. You were the one that's supposed to Teach every 
anybody else but thus said the Lord. But recall we have not done that, and we have not kept any knowledge, we have gone into captivity. And you still are, whether you want to acknowledge it or not. I look at them brothers out there shouting all that hatred and vitriol. They don't know, man. Police roll down on them and kill them all. They whine, me, blah, blah, blah. and the people going to whine, me, blah, blah, and then they're going to forget it. Yep. What happened to the Black Panthers? Nobody knew. I think the people that call themselves a Huro in Philadelphia, where they burnt the whole complex down and killed them. Ain't nobody talking about that now. You know why? Because this is the time of the Gentile, and this is between you and your God. If you refuse to be stupid, then you're going to receive the reward of the stupid. I'm out there shaking your fist, my fist in your hand, and you got the tanks <laughs> in the plane, the flamethrowers and the mortars. What you going to do? I'm going to even look like an army, put me a uniform on. That means that when they start killing you, you ain't got He's nowhere to hide. There's no wisdom. Therefore, they have no discretion, sisters and brothers. Let's go into Isaiah. That was the last of that, right? Yep. Let's go into Isaiah, the 29th chapter. Isaiah chapter 29. Like some, somebody text, uh, text me when they found a noose down there on Obama's site where they're building the uh, uh, library. Somebody text me. Uh, we, uh, uh, we want you to speak at this meeting <laughs> we had down there. As long as it took me to do it with my phone, I text. N-O. <laughs> T-H-A-N-K-S. Yeah. That was enough. I text. <laughs> <laughs> How am I going to go down there and whine, get down there and whine, somebody left a noose down there and you're still kidding, you like hotcakes and you're still being hanged? Come on. You get through with this library, your condition's still going to be the same. That's right. Isaiah 29 and verse 9. Isaiah 29 and 9. That's why, they said why people don't know about me because I don't get involved in no foolishness. Right. I am a preacher. I ain't no civil rights leader. And I'm not a black activist. I am a preacher. And I think I got the best job on the planet. Verse 9, go ahead. Stay yourselves in wonder. Cry ye out and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They stagger, but not with strong drink. And this is not talking about physical alcohol, sister and brother. This is talking about religious drunk. Drunk with bad doctrine. And that's what's going on. Go ahead and read. For the, Lord, for the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of a deep sleep. Go ahead. And hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, hath he covered. Now he done done it because why? You refuse to see. Go ahead. And the vision of all has become unto you as the words of a book that is sealed. Uh -huh. Which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. And he said, I cannot, for it is sealed. So now this Bible has come to you just like it's sealed, sister and brother. Some people tell you to read it. Hey, they try to teach it, but it's sealed. You can't read something that's sealed. Go ahead and read. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, read this, I pray thee. Uh -huh. And he said, I am not learned. Now, and then you're going to deliver the book to somebody that can't read. He right. said, read it. I'm not, I can't read. So much for this preacher, this country preacher that can really preach, but he can't read. Right. What's he preaching? Go ahead. Well, for the Lord said, for as much as this people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips do honor me, uh -huh. but have removed their heart far from me, Go ahead. and their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. If you can't read the book and you preach it, then what are you preaching? The precept of men. That's right. The fear toward him is taught by the precept of men. And you know what men say? You don't have to fear God. God is love. He ain't going to hurt nobody. He loved everybody. He loved a thief. He loved a adulterer. 
He loved a fornicator. He loved a homosexual. He loved everybody. If that's the case, then we can get this book and throw it in, it, right. in the furnace and burn it. Well, ain't nobody going to get cut off. Skip down to verse 16. 14. Uh, 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 read verse 14. Go ahead. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among this people, uh -huh. even a marvelous work and a wonder. Go ahead. For the wisdom of their wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent shall be hid. Do we, you know of any wise men we got running around here now? Not among the preachers, out the politicians. You listen to their words. What they say, it just don't make sense. Skip down to verse 16. Look what they said. Go ahead and read. Surely you're turning the things upside down. That's what they do all the time. What you mean turning this thing upside down? God said he's going to come to this earth. Man, so we're going to heaven. All of them. God said the seventh day is the day of rest. Man said Sunday, the first day, is the Christian Sabbath day. God said everybody's ever died except for Jesus is still in the grave. But they didn't turn it upside down. See, your loved one is in heaven. And don't no good John is in hell being barbecued by Satan. So surely you're turning of things upside down. Go ahead. Shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. Now you know what a potter's clay, when, when the potter make a, a, a pot and it's not, he got a flaw in it, he just break it and, and make it over again. Go ahead and read. For shall the work of him that made it, for shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Uh -huh. Or shall the thing framed say of him that framed it, he had no understanding? Look, and that's what they're saying about God, sister and brother. God ain't got no understanding. God didn't make me. He ain't got no understanding. He, Moses and Elijah is in, is in heaven. Jesus said, ain't nobody ever been to heaven but him that came down, talking about himself. Jesus said, all that the Father give me ain't going to lose nothing. I'm going to raise it up at the last day. But they go a funeral. You know, that's not Brother Wheeler there. That's just his shell. He had made his homecoming. He is looking down on us smiling. You just call the Lord a lie. He ain't made no homecoming. When you put him in the ground, now he made his homecoming. Because the Lord said, dust thou art until dust thou shalt return. Ain't that what the Lord said? So you tell the Lord, you don't know what you're doing, mister. Let's go into Matthew, the 13th chapter. Matthew, chapter 13. And people ain't paying no attention. That's why this world is messed up. They don't know that according to what's written in this book, they're calling God a lie continuously. And when you quote what God say, they call you a cup. Matthew 13 and verse 1. Okay, go ahead. The same day when Jesus out of the house, and sat by the seaside. Uh -huh. And great multitudes were gathered together unto him. Go ahead. So that he went into a ship and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Go ahead. And he spake many things unto them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went forth to sow. Now he spoke many things to them in parables, but we're not right, going to we'll deal with the parables. We're going to deal with what, why he spoke the parables. Skip down to verse 10. Go ahead. And the disciples came and said unto him, why speakest thou unto them in parable? Uh -huh. He answered and said unto them, Because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, but to them it is not given. Now who is you? Those are his disciples, the one that followed him. Uh -huh. Those are the ones he gave it to know the kingdom of heaven. But the people that don't want to listen, it's not given to them. Even though you speak in plain to them, it's a parable. Mm -hmm. I'm talking to people about showing them where the Lord ain't going to raise nobody up. Until the last day. Showing him what Jesus is going to come and his feet going to stand up on the Mount of Olives. Showing him he's going to be God over the whole earth. And when I get through talking, yeah, I should be so glad when we get to heaven. <laughs> Why have I been talking? Well, nobody listening, so I'm speaking a parable to them. Go ahead and read. For whosoever hath, to him shall be given. Uh huh. And he shall have more abundance. For whosoever hath not, from him shall be taken away even that he has. So whoever had the word of God, God going to give him more. 
But the ones that don't have nothing, you're going to take that away from them. Go ahead and read what verse? Verse 13. Go ahead. Therefore speak, speak I to them in parables, uh -huh. because they seen, see not. Because they sin, and they see not. In other words, they won't believe what their line is. Eyes are showing them. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And hearing, they hear not. And they hear what I'm saying, but they refuse to accept it. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Neither do they understand. Uh-huh. And in them is fulfilled the prophecy of Isaiah, which saith, by hearing ye shall hear and shall not understand. Go ahead. And seeing ye shall see and shall not perceive. He said, Isaiah spoke about this. They hear the word of God, but they don't hear it because they don't want it. They read it in the book. They don't believe what their eyes are reading. Go ahead and read. For this people's heart is waxed gross, uh -huh. and their ears are dull of hearing, and their eyes they have closed. Who closed their eyes? They have closed. They have closed. Go ahead and read. Lest at any time they should see with their eyes, and hear with their ears, and should understand with their heart, and should be converted, and I should heal them. And when they see and hear this thing, they're going to change their ways. That's what converted is. And he said, when you do that, then I will heal them. But he said, Isaiah told you the same thing. Mm -hmm. Let's go into Isaiah, the sixth chapter. Isaiah chapter six. Even though I had it written by the prophets, nobody is paying attention. And in our generation, he had, he had it written by the prophets and the apostles, mm -hmm. and ain't nobody paying attention. Because mm -hmm. everybody want to do what they want to do, sister and brother. Isaiah 6, we're going to start at verse 1, 6 and 1. Go ahead and read. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Go ahead. Above it stood the seraphims. Each one had six wings. With twain he covered his face, and with twain he covered his feet, and with twain he did fly. Go ahead. And one cried unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. So now, Isaiah saw the vision of the Lord and the cherub angels that are around him. And let's see what happens. Skip down to verse 6 and go ahead. Then flew one of the seraphims unto me, having a live coal in his hand, Go ahead. which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar. Uh -huh. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. See, first thing, if you're going to be a servant of God, yeah. he's going to have to purge you of your sin. Mm -hmm. He's going to want to take your sin, your iniquity away from you, because a sin, because unclean vessel cannot carry a clean word, mm -hmm. sisters and brothers. Whatever something polluted, when you lay something polluted on the altar, then it pollutes the altar. First thing, you have to clean you up. Now, once he did that, now look what the Lord said. Go ahead and read. Also, I heard the voice of the Lord saying, whom shall I send? Uh -huh. And who will go for us? Then said I, here am I, send me. He knew it was ready then. Right. You understand? Whom shall I send? And who will go for us? Well, who is this us? That's talking about him right. and the Father. Right. Isaiah said, here I am, send me. Go ahead. And he said, go and tell this people, hear ye indeed, but understand not, and see ye indeed, but perceive not. He said, I want you to go and tell these people, you listening, but you don't understand. And you seeing what I'm saying, but you're not, it's not registering with you. Go ahead and read. Make the heart of this people fat, and make their ears heavy, and shut their eyes lest they see with their eyes and hear with their ears and understand with their heart and convert and be healed. Ain't that, ain't that, ain't that what we just read? That's right. It is on you. This is all between, all between you and your God. See what the Lord has written. Hear what he said. And if you do, you will be compelled to convert. Let's repent from what you're doing and stop doing wrong. Then the Lord will heal you. He will take you and give you whatever you need, sisters and brothers. But we ain't doing this because we're drunk. We are drunk with false doctrine. All Israel is. So if Israel is drunk with false doctrine, you know the rest of the world don't have a chance. You didn't know that, did you? 
Let's go into Isaiah the 28th chapter. Isaiah chapter 28. When you start understanding stuff like that, then you start to get scared. Because you know, hey, everybody that you cause to die, you got to atone for You got to pay for it. That's why I like to tell preachers sometimes to unnerve them. Don't you know, man, that we are among men most miserable and we are in most danger? Because everything that everybody that we preach the word to, if we preach them wrong and get them cut off, don't you know that we're going to have to pay for every soul that we call to get cut off? Now, if you didn't teach them right, you got a problem. I always say we. <laughs> they don't want to talk no more when I say stuff like that. In other words, I'm making you responsible for your behavior. Verse 1, 28 and 1. Go ahead and read. Woe to the crown of pride, to the drunkards of Ephraim, uh -huh. whose glorious beauty is a fading flower. Go ahead. Which are all the head of the fat valleys of them that are overcome with wine. Now we know, we read earlier, but they're drunk but not with wine. Mm -hmm. They stagger but not with drunk drink. That is drunk with bad doctrine. You calling, well, you know, the white man is evil. The book said we talk the evil mm -hmm. one his way. If we had been taught right, then if we had taught him right, he would have been right. Mm -hmm. But we've been drunk with what we want, what we think is right. Skip down to verse 7. Verse 7 and go ahead. But they also have erred through wine uh -huh. and through strong drink are out of the way. Now, that's, that's talking about bad doctrine. Mm -hmm. You're out of the way. Go ahead and read because you're a perpetual backslider. Go ahead and read. The priest and the prophet have erred through strong drink. Uh -huh. they, have swallowed, they are swallowed up of wine. Go ahead. They are out of the way through strong drink. Go ahead. They err in vision. They stumble in judgment. So they, are, they err in vision and they stumble in judgment. They make the wrong call, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. For all tables are full of vomit. How many? All tables. All tables are full of vomit. And filthiness. And filthiness. So there, there's no place clean. So all of them got bad doctrine on it. I look at the people, the uh, Sunday Christians, the people that go, their doctrine is bad. Then I look at my Hebrew brothers out in the streets teaching hatred and all kind of vitriol. Their doctrine is bad. Both tables are full of vomit. When the Lord saw that, then he asked a question. What is that question? Go ahead. Whom shall he teach knowledge? Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Remember he said wisdom and knowledge, but with mm -hmm. all you're getting, get understanding? Right. Go ahead and read. Them that are weaned from the milk uh -huh. and drawn from the breast. That's the street milk of the word. Mm -hmm. You can read that in First Peter, the second chapter, but then that's another lesson. So they have to be weaned from the milk. They have to get some understanding and start eating meat. Go ahead. For precept must be upon precept. A precept, sisters and brothers. A precept is the order of things and obedience. So precept must be upon precept. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Precept upon precept. Precept upon precept. Go ahead. Line upon line. Uh-huh. Line upon line. Go ahead. Here a little and there a little. Line upon line, not in between That's the right. line. Read on the line. That's right. Here a little and there a little. Why here a little and there a little? Because you read something you don't understand here, but mm -hmm. over there mm -hmm. it will explain what you said, what he said here. Mm -hmm. So you just read and the word will interpret itself. Right. The Lord will clear up what he is saying. Line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little and there a little. Go ahead and read. For with stammering lips and another tongue will he speak to this people. Now this is something that my brothers don't pay no attention to. With stammering lips and another tongue will I speak to this people. Why another? Another from where? From Hebrew. Right. We don't know what Hebrew is. So that means he's going to speak to us in whatever language we speak. With stammering lip and another tongue will I speak to this people? Go ahead and read. To whom he said, uh -huh. this is the rest wherewith ye may cause the weary to rest. Go ahead. And this is the refreshing, yet they would not hear. He said, still in this word, in this truth, this is what's going to call the weary mm -hmm. to rest. This word is what's going to give you peace. He said, but still they wouldn't hear. Paul spoke about the same thing. 
in the tongues chapter. Let's go into 1 Corinthians in the 14th chapter. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. And they condemn this. Well, you see, uh, ain't no J in the Hebrew language. In the, look here, the Lord said another tongue we're going to speak to this people. Right. He's going to speak to you into a language you never heard before. But you ain't going to listen to nobody. You know why? Because you are a condemner. You don't hear nothing. You ask condemn, condemn to condemn. Can't nobody make no sense to you. Then you're going to call them a call on a name that you, don't, you can't even pronounce. Well, this come from what language? They done gave Jesus so many names, but I, I wonder what language they're talking right. about. They speak it in tongues. Most people don't understand <laughs> tongues merely mean another language. 14 and 1. 1 Corinthians, the 14th chapter, and verse 1. Go ahead and read. Follow after charity and desire spiritual gifts. Go ahead. But rather that ye may prophesy. Now, you got people got these at Pentecostal church. They're going in, everybody's speaking to something. They don't understand another language. You ain't got nobody to interpret. He said, but rather, he would rather you prophesy because mm -hmm. now you're speaking plain. Go ahead and read. For he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, Go ahead. but unto God. Go ahead. For no man understandeth him. Howbeit in the spirit, he speaketh mystery. So how do, you, how do you need to speak to God? You ain't going to teach him. So you're speaking to the people that understand your language so you can teach them. Right. Skip down to verse 18. Verse 18 and go ahead. I thank my God I speak with more tongue, with tongues more than ye all. Go ahead. Yet in the church I had rather speak five words with my understanding uh -huh. that by my voice I might teach others also. You need to, somebody need to speak, read some of this to the Pentecostal. Mm -hmm. He says, I'd rather speak five words with my, with my understanding than in some unknown tongue. He said, I speak with more tongues than all of you. But mm -hmm. go ahead and read. Than 10,000 words in an unknown tongue. Boy, ain't that something? I would rather speak five words that I know what I'm saying, and you know what I'm saying, than 10,000 words, and don't nobody know what I'm saying. Who is being edified? Right, nobody. All you're doing is blowing smoke. What verse? Verse 20. Go ahead and read. Brethren, be not children in understanding, howbeit in malice be ye children. Uh -huh. But in understanding, be men. Didn't it tell you get wisdom and knowledge, but yep. with all your getting, get understanding? He said, be children and evil stuff. Don't put, commit it, but in, in understanding, I want you to be men. Go ahead and read. And the Lord is written. And the Lord is written. With men of other tongues and other lips will I speak unto this people. Now look, he said, in the law it said, with stammering lip and another tongue. It didn't say about men, didn't right. it? But if somebody going to speak a tongue, have to be in the mouth of a man, That's don't right. So in the law is written, with men of other tongues and other lips will I speak to this people. Go ahead and read. And yet for all that will they not hear me, saith and, the Lord. And yet for all that they will not hear me. Think about it. For all of that they will not hear me, said the Lord. In short, whatever language you find yourself speaking in Israel, because we are still the priests. Even though he's some will reject you from, but we still a priest. That's why all these books are written by Israelites. So if I want my priest to be informed, whatever language they speak, I gotta speak to them in that language. Right. I gotta teach them in that language. Right. He said, but still, for all of that, they won't hear. And I look at these brothers in the streets on YouTube every night. Y'all look at them every night. Because I'm putting together a portfolio on them. So when I come to face to face, I'm going to strip them like a banana and let them know that you naked, running around thinking you, you clothes. I do that, sister and brother. I do that. Not to make them look bad, but hopefully I can open up their eyes and they start doing this thing right. You got all this zeal, now let's put a little knowledge with it. Mm -hmm. Then you get out and do what you're supposed to do. That's right. That's why with men of other tongues, when he's speaking to his people, but still, he said, but with all that, we will not hear, sisters and brothers. And I'm going to show you what I'm saying about 
You can speak to people. You ain't speaking a foreign language, but still they don't hear. Let's go into St. John, the 8th chapter. St. John, chapter 8. See, I'm going to tell you, sister and brother, I have to do this. this I have to teach this word the way, the way it's written. I have to operate out of the wisdom and knowledge of God. I pray to him all the time to increase me. Even now, I'm asking the Lord to increase me because I want to teach what he won't talk. Nothing more. A lot of people mad at me, like my brother said, my brother Baptist preacher said to my sister and brother, you know, Henry got a problem. You know, the, the, uh, the, the Christians don't like him because he's <laughs> he teaching about you ain't going to heaven. And Sunday ain't the Lord's day. And the Hebrew Israelites don't like him because he said he's a Christian. Don't nobody like him. I said, I'm in a pretty good position. St. Mm -hmm. John 8 and 37. That's why I don't care. I'm going to read what's in this book whether you like it or not. Mm -hmm. 8 and 37. Okay, go ahead. I know that ye are Abraham's seed, but ye seek to kill me. Now look, hey, some of them, I'm Abraham's seed. Jesus said, I know that you're Abraham's seed, but you seek to kill me. You're telling me you're Abraham's seed, but look, you seek to kill me. Go ahead and read. Because my word hath no place in you. That's why, because my word don't have no place in you. That's why you want to kill me. Go ahead and read. I speak that which I have seen I have seen with my father, and ye do that which ye have seen with your father. Go ahead. They answered and said unto him, Abraham is our father. Uh -huh. Jesus said unto them, if ye were Abraham's children, ye would do the works of Abraham. And that says it simple on it. My children are going to do what I tell them to do. If you were Abraham's children, then you would obey the way Abraham was. Go ahead and read. But now you seek to kill me. Go ahead. A man that hath told you the truth, uh -huh. which I have heard of God, this did not Abraham. He said, look, y'all, you know, Abraham didn't want to kill me. I told you the truth. Go ahead and read. You do the deeds of your father. Go ahead. Then said they unto him, we be not born of fornication. We have one father, even I, God. I think they kind of threw a rock at yeah. Jesus. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. <laughs> look here now. <laughs> we don't know who your daddy is, right. Joseph, ain't. Eh? Right. In other words, he's a child of fornication. Right. That's because they didn't understand the prophecy. Mm -hmm. You understand? A lot of people accuse you of being something, and they are guilty because of ignorance. But what did he say? Go ahead. And he didn't reciprocate. What did he say? Go ahead. Jesus said unto them, if God were your father, he would love me. For I proceeded forth and came from God. Neither came I of myself, but he sent me. He said, if he were your father, you love me. I didn't come on my own. He sent me. Go ahead and read. Why do you not understand my speech? Why do you not understand my speech? Even because you cannot hear my words. Because you can't hear my words. In other words, he was speaking parables to them. Speaking the same language, but they didn't hear mm -hmm. nothing. That's why the Lord said parables. That's because it's not for them. It's for those that believe me. He said, why don't you hear my speech? Because you do not hear my word. Go ahead and read. Uh, skip down to verse 7, brother, and read it. 47. He that is of God. Verse 47. I'm sorry. Verse 47. Go ahead and read. He that is of God heareth God's word. Uh-huh. Ye therefore hear them not, because ye are not of God. And it's all that simple. I'm speaking a parable to you. Because if you was God of God, then you, hear, you would hear God's word. But because you're not of God, you don't hear nothing he say. God told us the to priest to be, he, we was his priest. He dispatched us to save all of the sons of Adam. Put them out in the streets condemning them, saying all are going to get cut off and this and that. Then that's not God's word. Therefore, they are not of God. They got a different father. Not God, sister and brother. It's all that simple. So why couldn't they hear Jesus' speech? Because they serve two different gods. Mm -hmm. And to them, he was speaking parables. Now let's go. 
a little further, sister and brother. Let's go into Ezekiel, the 14th chapter. Ezekiel chapter 14. Because I'm going to tell you the truth, sister and brother. If we didn't have these brothers out there working for Satan, then they are. We have so much come, many people coming to Israel to God, we couldn't get them in here with a shoe spoon. Because people are looking from all nationalities, all creed and all colors. They're looking for the truth. If they see somebody out there dealing with it, they would come. But why are they coming here? Because every time you say, I'm a Hebrew Israelite, uh-oh, they mind, go to the street corners. All they see is hatred. All kind of vitriol. Down talking, ugly talking. Looking like witch doctors. Mm -hmm. If we didn't have that opposition out here, Israel of God wouldn't have nowhere to put it. There was a Gentile a gentleman from Texas. He probably he's listening now. He said he knew that we Israel, but he wouldn't say nothing because of what these people said. He said when he heard the Israel of God. Me and the Israeli God, he said, it, to him, it was a breath of flesh air. You know, this Gentile asked me, would it be all right if I tell the blacks that they are the real Jews? I said, yeah, you can tell them. I said, but don't say Jews, real Israelites. Mm -hmm. He asked permission and wanted to do it. Why? It's because our doctrine is a doctrine of God, and God wants to save everybody. Right that come out of Adam and Eve. Therefore, he was included, not excluded. How you want somebody to listen to you and, they don't, and, they, and the only thing they include you in is destruction? Ezekiel 14 and verse 1. Go ahead. Then came certain of the elders of Israel unto me and sat before me. Uh -huh. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Go ahead. Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Should I be inquired of, of, of at all by them? So these are people that already have in their mind what they're going to serve and what they ain't going to believe. Now they come before Ezekiel, he couldn't look in their mind, but God looked in their mind. He said, every one of these had their own little idol set in their mind. Shall I be inquired of these people? Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. Therefore speak unto them uh -huh. and say unto them, thus saith the Lord God. Go ahead. Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idols in his heart and put it the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face, and cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. He said, look, if you come to the prophet, don't worry, don't answer me. He's equal, I'm going to answer. According to the multitude of them little idols mm -hmm. they got in their head. Idols that tell them that they're going to do something contrary to what I told them. Go ahead and read. That I may take the house of Israel in their own heart, because they are all estranged from me through their idols. And that's what it is. You're calling on the God of Israel, but your doctrine saying you're serving something else. Mm -hmm. He said, they're all estranged to me. They all are. Because they can't see this. Let's go into 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. And we're going to start at verse 1, 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. Just like Jesus said to them, them Jews, look, you can't hear my words because you, you're not from, because you, don't, you are not from God. Why can't you understand my speech? 4 and 1, go ahead and read. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. Now, he said, now, look, we, we're doing this thing. We're doing this thing right. We're not practicing craft on you. Mm -hmm. We ain't handling this word deceitfully. We're bringing this thing the way it is written. Go ahead. But by manifestation of the truth, uh -huh. commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Go ahead. But if our gospel be hid, but it, it is hid. Uh, look, we're bringing this thing to you according to the way it's written. Mm -hmm. But if our, God, if, if our gospel be hid, go ahead. It is hid to them that are lost. 
Uh -huh. and whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. You know, I, I, I quoted this to a brother last Wednesday in question and answer. He come and asked me the same question he put in the other, trying to make Jesus, uh, make uh, Jehovah, brother, the father. And said, he is the mighty God and Jesus is not. I took him through some scriptures to let him know Jehovah is Jesus. Jesus said, come in his father's name. Showed him that the people, that, uh, that the God that talked to Moses, them in the Red Sea, and brought them across the Red Sea, and on the cloud was Jesus. Showed him that you ain't never heard the Father's voice at any time or seen his shape. And a few other things I showed him because I got, had to show him that you didn't call here because you wanted to ask a question and get edified. You called here because you think you're teaching somebody. Right. Mm -hmm. So I ran a litany, a litany of things by him and let him know that Jesus and Jehovah is the same. And Jesus is that high God that the book is talking about. And I told him, I quoted his brother, if you don't see this, that's because you're blinded by the God of this world. Don't come here and ask this question again. It would not be dealt with. Because you can't keep teaching a person that won't hear. Mm -hmm. They got a little God in their mind. So whatever you say to him is parable. I tell him, you don't come here with this no more. We won't even deal with it again. Jesus is the only God we ever dealt with. So if this gospel is hidden, that's because you got this idol? Because my, the Lord's word is a parable to you. You will not listen. Let's go into Jeremiah, the third chapter. Jeremiah chapter 3. I got three more places after this. Jeremiah chapter 3. Because, sister, this thing is, people don't want no knowledge. They don't want, you get some books, they want to talk, talk uh, people, you want to talk the word of God, but then when you open up the Bible, well, you don't have to open up the Bible now. Why not? You're going to talk the word that's supposed to be in the Bible, but you don't want me to open up the Bible. Something's wrong here. Something's wrong. Then people get in your comment, well, I don't know the Bible, but then shut up. We're speaking Bible here. How are you going to come and get in a conversation and you're going to tell me right out the door that you don't read the Bible, but? Jeremiah 3, and let's start at verse 14. 3 and 14. Okay, go ahead. Turn, O backsliding children, uh -huh. saith the Lord. Go ahead. For I am married unto you. Go ahead. And I will take you one of a city and two of a family, and I will bring you to Zion. He said, turn, because I'm married to you. I'm married to you. I'm going to take you wherever you are, and I'm going to bring you to Zion. But I got a big secret, though, brother. He's going to take you through the wilderness first. He's going to cause you to pass under the rod, and he's going to bring you into the bond of the covenant. And in order to get under the bond of the covenant, you've got to be baptized in Jesus' name. So what's going to happen with all them girls talking about ain't OJ? <laughs> he said, I will purge out the rebels, and you shall not enter into the land of Israel. A lot of these Hebrews on the corner will never see the land of Israel. Even though I think that we're in the generation when the Lord's going to return. And I don't think it because I'm emotional. I think because I know prophecy. The Lord told me in the days of these kings, that's them 10 European nations that rule in Western Europe. He said, in the days of these kings, shall the God of heaven set up a kingdom. And I'm looking at them. Go ahead and read. And I will give you pastors according to mine heart. And look, and I'm going to give, when I bring you back, one of a city, I'm going to give you pastors according to mine heart. Go ahead. Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. Which shall feed you with knowledge and understanding. That's the kind of pastors you're going to give when you come back. They're going to teach you. Let's go on Ecclesiastes, the 12th chapter. Because we still going to have to be taught. You know why? Because we ain't listening now. If we was listening, we wouldn't have to be taught. And if he said, 
give you pastors that's going to teach you knowledge and understanding, that means you don't have none. And who was he talking to there? He was talking to Israel, right. wasn't he? That's right. He didn't say, turn old black slide stranger. Mm -hmm. He said, turn old black slide in Israel. Mm -hmm. That means that Israel running out here and he ain't got no knowledge and understanding. He's just blowing his home. Right. Pay attention to what you're reading, sisters and brothers. You'd be surprised at the knowledge and wisdom that this book has. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. And we're going to start at verse 9. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 9. Okay, read. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. He did what? He still taught the people knowledge. Because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Yeah. He gave good heed uh -huh. and sought out and set in order many proverbs. That's the word of God. That's right. Paul called it rightfully defined the scripture. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, uh -huh. and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. That which was written, written where? In the Bible. Right. He had to see it, to search it out, sisters and brothers. That's what I do every morning for 54 years. So what I tell you is going to be what thus said the Lord. Even words of truth. Go ahead. The words of the wise are as gold uh -huh. and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies. You know, what, you know what the gold is? That's something that drives you mm -hmm. if you're into it. And it's just like nails fastened by a master of, masters of assembly. That means you got to know what you're talking about. That's why I tell these brothers that's going out teaching all over. I say, you guys are professional right. preachers. You know what a pro is? He know what he's doing. That's right. That's right. So when you open your mouth, you know what you're talking about, and can't nobody push you in a corner. And the people are going to see that, and they're going to listen to you. So he said, words of the wise as gold, as nails fastened by the master of assemblies. Go ahead. Which are given from one shepherd. Which are given from one shepherd. The Lord Told us, I come not to condemn the world, but I came to save the world. But the words that I speak unto you, they are going to judge you in the last day. And when you open this book up and read the 20th chapter of Revelation, he said, and the books was open, and the judgment was set. And everyone was judged out of the things that's written in the books, this book, according to their work. So don't bring me the Apocrypha. Don't bring me the book of Jasha or the book of Enoch. He said, this is by, then he said, but how many shepherds here? Will you read that one more time? <laughs> Which are given from one shepherd. And that shepherd is Jesus. You're going to tell me Jesus wrote the Apocrypha? He wrote the book of Jasha? He wrote the book of Enoch? You're going to be judged out of this book, sisters and brothers. This is where it's going to be. He said, and the preacher was wise. He taught you wisdom. And un the, the wise preacher is going to teach you wisdom and understanding. Let's go back to Proverbs, the third chapter. Proverbs chapter 3. Because I look around, sister and brother, I see all, I don't see no, I don't see no way that anybody can stand against the teaching of the Israel of God. That's like they had the little session. When was that? Monday or Tuesday or something? Monday. When did y'all have that thing? Monday. Clubhouse. Huh? Monday. Monday at Clubhouse. It was just college grads spanking diaper babies. It was so bad that there can't nobody rejoice over it. All the brothers that did it, hey, they had grief. Yep. Yep. They had grief. How can my brothers be so uninformed? How can the priests have such a deficit in knowledge? Ain't nothing to rejoice over. It's something to cry about. Proverbs 3 and verse 13. Go ahead and read. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom. 
and the man that geteth understandeth. Sure, yeah, believe me. I, I can attest to that. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver. Uh huh. And the gain thereof than fine gold. Look, this is better than all this. Yes. Look at all the preachers. Like, ain't, ain't nothing wrong with a minister getting uh, uh, paid if he is teaching the truth. But look at all of all of them about money. And I won't even accept no salary. You know why? Because I want to be God. This word to me is much more than money, silver and gold. Keep your silver and your gold. Give me the word. This is give me, money will give me a temporary good living. Mm -hmm. The word will give me an eternal better living. No fear of getting cut off. What verse was that? We just finished 14. Go ahead. Skip to 18. Skip down to verse 18 and go ahead. She is a tree of life to them that lay hold upon her. That's what wisdom is. That's it's a right. tree of life. That lay hold to them that lay hold on them. Had Adam and Eve had eaten of the right tree, mm -hmm. what would have happened? Live we wouldn't down. be dying, would we? Yep. She is a tree of, life, tree of life to them that lay hold on her. Go ahead. And happy is everyone that retaineth her. Yes, sir. The if you Lord, get this, and you get this and understand it, you are happy. Go mm -hmm. ahead and read. The Lord by wisdom hath founded the earth. Uh-huh. By understanding hath he established the heaven. Look, he ain't giving us something that's unproven. He proved it himself first. It took wisdom and understanding to establish the earth and stretch this heaven out. He said, I used it when I was doing this. Go mm -hmm. ahead and read. By his knowledge, the depths are broken up. Uh huh. And the clouds drop down the dew. By his knowledge, he's given us the same thing that the tools that he used, sisters right. and brothers. The same tools. They have been proven. It's just like I can tell a young brother to go out and, 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 and engage other brothers. You don't have to wet, sweat, mm -hmm. because your preacher proved that this word right. works. In Washington, God, not beat up everybody. Whether he was Moorish American, whether you were Muslim, whether you were a sage, or the rest of the Christian, or uninformed Hebrew, right. it didn't matter to me. Bring it on. My God gave me something that he had proven, and I pass it on to the brothers yep. and sisters. It's proven. When you walk in a room, you own it. And I said, that's the only thought I want you to have in your mind. Go ahead and read. My son, let not them depart from thine eyes. Uh-huh. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. Don't, don't forget them, ever. Keep sound wisdom and discretion. Go ahead and read. So shall they be life unto thy soul and grace to thy neck. What else can you ask for? They're going to be life to your soul and grace unto your neck. Skip down and read verse 35. Go ahead. The wise shall inherit glory, but shame shall be the promotion of fools. So if you're wise, somebody going to always be glorifying you. But you're a fool, somebody going to always make you shame because they're going to be proving that you don't know nothing. Let's end this in Job, the 28th chapter. Mm -hmm. Did I finish that? Yep. Let's go to Job, chapter 28. Y'all, sisters and brothers, that's why I tell brothers all the time, if you, don't, don't, if you can't read it, I don't want to hear it come out of your mouth. And the quickest way for you to be removed from teaching in the Israel of God is go out there talking something that you can't read. And I tell brothers all the time, do not try me. When the Lord removed me and you under somebody else's watch, then so be it. But as long as I'm here, you better teach what thus said the Lord. Mm -hmm. What the Lord says, so show that to me. Twenty-eight and verse one, Job chapter twenty-eight and verse one. Okay, go ahead. Surely there's a vein for the silver, uh -huh. and a place for gold where they find it. Go ahead. Iron is taken out of the earth, and brass is molten out of the stone. Lord, letting you know where everything comes from. Mm -hmm. Skip down to verse 12. Verse 12 and go ahead. But where shall wisdom be found? But where shall wisdom be found? Go ahead. And where's the place of understanding? And where is the place of understanding? Man knoweth not the price thereof. Neither is it found in the land of the living. Man knoweth not the price of wisdom. He said, neither is it found in the land of the That's living. That's right. Wisdom is found with God. 
When you're born, you're dumb like the dirt you was made out of. You have to be taught. You understand? He was not among from among us. Go ahead. The depth said, it is not in me. And the sea said, it is not with me. Uh -huh. It cannot be gotten for gold. Neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. You can't buy. Go ahead and read. It cannot be valued, valued with the gold of Ophir, uh -huh. with the precious onyx or the sapphire. It can't be valued with that because they can only get you a good living, mm -hmm. but wisdom will get you eternal life. Ain't no comparison, sisters and brothers. Go ahead and read. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it. Uh-uh. And the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. Okay, nothing you trade for it. Go ahead and read. No mention shall be made of coral or of pearls, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. It's above everything. Go ahead. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it. Uh-huh. Neither shall it be valued with pure gold. Go ahead. Whence then cometh wisdom, and where's the place of understanding. He says, so why is it then that wisdom came from? And where is the place of understanding? Everything that I put on that we find valuable can't produce it no. or could be compared to it. So where did it come from? Skip down to verse 23 and read it. God understandeth the way thereof. God understandeth the way thereof. Go ahead. And he knoweth the place thereof. And he know where it lies. God do. God do. Not man. Skip down to verse 27. Verse 27, go ahead. Then did he see it and declare it. Then God saw, uh, God saw it and he declared it. Go ahead. He prepared it. He prepared it. Yeah, and searched it out. And he searched it out. Go ahead. And unto man he said. Look what he said to this man now. Once he approved it. Behold, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. Behold, the fear of the Lord, that's wisdom. Mm -hmm. Go ahead and read. And to depart from evil. And to depart from evil. Is understanding. That's understanding. Out of all that, it came down to that simplicity, didn't it? <laughs> what we started with. Thank you for your time. Yes, I'm